Thanks, Jenny. Uh, you got us off to a great start. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is share a specific example of how we've used the principles that Jenny uh, talked about um, to do a project here in um, the Upper Great Plains. We partnered with uh, South Dakota State University, um, several extension and research folks up there, as well as research and extension uh, faculty here at the University of Nebraska. Um, you kind of saw a, pr a preview of our process um, in Jenny's talk, but basically what we did is we gathered up that team of experts and then we decided to split our focus groups um, into two different uh, time periods. The first one we've uh, completed last fall, and this is where we got together producers and um, we also had a lot of other allied industry folks, so some bankers, um, equipment, and veterinarians because we wanted to kind of get the full breadth of the beef industry. Um, so we gathered them together at three different locations, um, one in South Dakota and then Eastern and Western Nebraska locations, and had them come up with the scenarios that I'll be showing you. Um, currently, we have some modeling efforts going on because our idea is, is that so we got a really good qualitative picture with focus group, and then we can model um, those drivers that they came up with and hopefully put a few hard numbers um, into the impacts. And then what we're doing kind of as we speak, we've finished one and we've got two more coming up, are bringing together those stakeholder groups again to talk about, so now that we've kind of focused in on the scenarios, what are the management options to tackle those? Um, and then from that, we hope to come up with um, some programming plans um, by the spring. So we'll, st we'll, so we'll go into depth about the, you know, we're calling this kind of the potential beef future. So like Jenny said, instead of just picking either our favorite or what we think will be the hardest, um, this kind of gives us a broad perspective so we can see areas where we might want to take advantage of that scenario or places where we really need to strategize on how to make um, ourselves more resilient to be able to tackle it. Um, so in the small groups, these were, uh, these drivers were things that came up quite a bit. Um, we, you know, we've got economics, regulations and taxes, um, people, everything from like customer uh, demands to uh, labor issues on the farm. And then what's specifically happen happening on a ranch, all of those can definitely change what's happening for the industry. Um, but we really tried to draw some boundaries around um, let's just focus in on what are the weather and climate impacts um, so that it could be small enough for us to tackle. Um, some of the other scenario plans, uh, scenario planning efforts that others have done dive into some of these and uh, it's a really great process but we felt it was a little bit beyond our scope so we kind of pulled these outside and called them um, outside drivers. So what we came up with was similar to Jenny's group. Um, our folks like the idea of splitting it into the winter versus the, so we did a winter spring versus a summer fall because what is happening on the farm and ranch is um, so much different at those times. So I mean, this has some assumptions built into it that um, we're kind of assuming um, average production system. So with a, Winter or spring calving is uh, kind of what's considered average. So obviously there are some herds that are doing fall calving and so it would fall a little bit out of this. But what we did was say, okay, what's the dominant production type in our region? And then we'll look at that both in the spring and then in the summer. <coughs> so let's spend a minute kind of digging into the details of, of these. What I did was, um, so the picture is kind of a graphical representation of all of the um, inputs from the farmers. So the first thing they picked was what are the critical drivers? And similar to Jenny's, uh, precipitation going from drier than usual, so we're kind of going to the extreme, so drought conditions, to wetter than usual. So we considered both kind of chronic wet periods as well as large storm events. Um, and then temperature, these are colder than average versus um, 
warmer than average is is kind of what was those came to the top as as far as what were discussed the most um, and then we sorted our impacts based on different so these are kind of we just call them categories for lack of a better term but it's basically different areas of the farm and production chain and so the idea is is in these pictures you're looking at essentially the same farm but what's happening with these different sets of uh, conditions. Um, so in this one, we've got a dry cold scenario. So, so uh, we called it deep freeze. So in the winter time, remember these are for winter. Um, so this is not a bad one. This is actually some place where um, cattle, the cattle producers could um, take advantage of some of this. this. If this was the general trend, you know, we'd have a lot of good conditions for cattle. The main thing they're concerned about is as you get into spring, you might have some concern when we get into our cropping systems of do we have good germination? Um, are pastures getting going in the spring? So that's the main thing that the farmers are looking for. But overall, um, pretty easy one to tackle. Um, the next we'll flip over and look at we're still colder than average, and this is for our region and then wetter than average. So what that tends to mean here is a snowy winter and cold rain in the spring. And this one's a lot more challenging to deal with. You'll see there's a lot more red. On the other side, it's um, when you deal with mud and cold rains, you have a lot of issues with health and, and just general productivity in the cattle. Um, and then again, for um, our cropping systems, it's hard to get in the field. Things are getting mucked up. It just takes a lot of um, labor and time to deal with this with this type of scenario you know and we have even you know if it's very much to where we're flooding we're having a lot of issues with even logistics can we get to our um, operations if bridges are washed out and that sort of thing so this kind of lets again like I said, it kind of lets you look at the full gamut um, to the extremes still in winter but if we flip around and we look at what then um, a warmer than average winter, which here is where we've brought in the climate science and we can say, well, this is more likely to occur. Um, but knowing our region, we'll probably still see all of these, but we're, we're more likely to see um, these types of winters. Um, and at the, on the bottom there, those are some quotes that I have out of our focus group. So this one was their favorite. You know, they called it, this is great cattle weather. Um, the cattle do well, you don't have to worry about health, you know, maybe it's a little dusty and you have some issues with that, but that's not too hard to tackle. Um, really, the only thing you're concerned about is if it's dry enough um, that it really affects germination in the spring. And then this one was considered out of all eight, so we've got the summer and winter, so there's eight total scenarios. This was the hardest one to tackle. Um, the quote on the bottom there, I tell you what, I've lost more crop than livestock when it's wet than dry. And particularly when we're talking about cold and wet, um, you really struggle with your calving period. You don't get good performance in the, in the lot. Um, nothing's growing very well. It's hard to get out in the fields. Um, everybody's kind of cold and miserable and muddy. So um, this is one that they weren't fans of. And we actually had one person who just, uh, if we said, you know, if this was going to happen most of the time in the future, what would your response be? And um, one of the people was just like, I think I'd just sell it and move to, you know, move south. <laughs> I'd be done with it because this is this would be the hardest of the scenarios to tackle. And we'll talk a bit more about some of those and kind of what are we going to do um, here in just a little bit. Um, so let's get to summer and fall. And so this is kind of your more growing season time period. Again, we've got the same external kind of overall drivers and same climate drivers. So in this case, we're looking at drier um, to wetter still and then cooler than average summer all the way up to hot. <clears throat> so again, remember this is for the upper Great Plains. And so we don't get super hot currently. Um, but this is uh, looking at, so if we see a lot more of those hot summers. Um, the first one, let's take a look at, is um, a dry, cool summer. So this is one where it's good for the cattle, but poor for our feed supplies. And so feed starts to get expensive because they're, um, you're not having good growth in 
either your pasture um, forage cropping or annual cropping. But otherwise, not too bad um, for the people and animals. If we look at a summer that's cool and wet, this one's um, kind of average. You know, it's one of those things where you've got moisture, so things are growing. Um, but you start to have some cattle health issues when you're dealing with a lot of mud, um, maybe some feed issues because things are just staying too damp throughout the growing season. And then if you get to the extremes, you know, you start having logistical issues um, dealing with the mud and flooding. And um, this is where, you know, manure management in these wetter scenarios also gets to be a challenge. A hot, dry summer. So this is a, what we'd call a classic drought for this region. Um, so these are challenging to deal with. But what's interesting when we started talking about it, we have a lot of strategies for dealing with this because it's something we've seen. It's already part of our climate. Um, the discussion then just becomes um, if it happens more frequently, you know, maybe there's some thresholds we start crossing to where we change a few things. Um, the banker was the one who put in the quote here at the bottom that droughts are the hardest because there's nothing left to sell. So it's kind of interesting getting that larger mix of people. Um, you know, the banker was most concerned about the drought because um, he didn't have anything left to sell. But for the producers, they, you know, from a production standpoint, it was that cold, wet winter um, that they thought was the hardest one to deal with. But droughts are challenged. Um, for kind of well-known reasons, uh, again, with forages, as well as you start to have heat stress uh, in your cattle. So both the cattle um, and your forages are having, uh, having challenges in these type of scenarios. And then the last one is the hot, wet winter, which um, from the climatology perspective is the one that's probably uh, most likely to increase in this region, is we'll see um, more precipitation. Well, it's kind of alternating between too much and too little. So these kind of these top two ones are kind of where the climate, climatologists are saying we should focus. Um, and here again, it's something that there's um, some definite challenges, particularly on the cattle side with heat stress, because you start to have um, a lot more issues um, when you get that temperature humidity index up higher. Um, but on the cropping side, when you've got moisture, you know, it's not too bad. You might have some issues with mud and getting, getting harvest in and maybe some quality issues, um, but at least there's moisture to get things growing. Um, so with that, I'll switch over to just our, so our next round of focus groups is looking at, so what do we do? Now that we kind of have prioritized these top scenarios, what do we do about it? And I just have a kind of a real basic overview here because like, so we just done our first one and so I haven't really dug into it too much yet. Um, but basically, as people brainstorm through these, there's things that um, people in the group are already doing now, um, whether that's because they're a progressive producer or it's just kind of common knowledge. We're kind of gathering that piece of what are they already doing and how common is that? You know, is it because they're kind of out on the edge or is it just something everyone does? And then what are options that they might consider? And so we brainstormed all sorts of different um, uh, options for, for how they might cope with these scenarios. And kind of already I can see these are breaking out into two general categories of that there's things that, well, we have good research on, we're ready to take out and do extension programming. For example, cover crop. There's not a lot of cover cropping um, in this region yet. Um, but we have good, uh, solid science foundation that we could take out and do pr more programming on that. Um, whereas there's other issues that we don't really know the answer to. And so it's definitely something that needs more research. Um, for example, um, one that came up was, well, when, when is it economically viable to switch uh, and bring in more southern cattle genetics? And so there's, there's plenty of them that kind of fall into each of these categories. Um, and then once we've kind of brainstormed it, then we can start to look at there's different strategies and how can we help inform um, a farm strategy on which ones to choose. So ideally, you know, if you think of the X here in the middle as your different scenarios, so there's still four, if you had a robust uh, management option, it would improve, improve your resiliency in all four scenarios. 
And obviously those are the best because they're good no matter what. But in reality, it doesn't always work that way. So there's different strategies um, producers can take and are there educational um, tools that we can give them to help inform these decisions of which options um, do they want to tackle. For example, kind of a bet the farm option that we have a couple of our producers have done is uh, they've decided they're tired of dealing with the weather, so they're going to put their cattle into buildings. So we've gone to some fully confined beef cattle systems, which is brand new for this uh, region. Um, cattle here are typically out in lots. So they're putting all their eggs into that basket of saying, we think the weather's going to be more challenging as we go into the future. This is where we want to go. So helping inform those discussions is kind of where we're headed with our programming. With that, I'll wrap up, and um, I probably should have taken out the question slide because we'll do questions at the end, um, but wanted to make sure our emails uh, got up there so you can either contact myself or Rick Stoll here at the University of Nebraska.